A two-day forum held in the fall of 2000 brought together more than 160 Cupertino residents, business people, and city leaders. They gathered at De Anza College to talk about the future of Cupertino during an event called Local Links, a Cupertino Community Congress. The Congress was co-sponsored by the City of Cupertino, De Anza College, and the Public Dialogue Consortium. It was the brainchild of former Mayor John Staden. In the pace of change that's in our society today, in the time when we all have very little time to really give back to the place that we live in, when our time is being consumed by work, by career, by family, by a lot of other very important demands, it also is really important that we sit and stay focused on what it means to be part of a community. Community is not uh, just one thing or easy to define. A sociologist one time said that if you went to a sociology department looking for a simple, single definition of community, you'd never leave. He says that to some people, community is a feeling. To some people, it's relationships. To some people, it's a place. And to some, it's an institution. As we know, the realities of the 21st century sometimes stretch the notion of community a bit and maybe make it seem a little thinner than it would otherwise be. How do members of the city of Cupertino define community in the 21st century? The word com in Latin means with and unity, so community is with unity. Safety, friendliness. It's a great place, unique, distinctive. Walkable, bikeable, approachable, and connectable. <laughs> We like good schools. Share the goals. Necessary to education, social, educational activities. Communication. Balance. City officials who are friendly and accessible. A support system. Taking pride in your community. A place of common gathering. Trust with your neighbors to watch over your house when you're out of town. A group of stresses its unity instead of its diversity. A place that constantly is evolving and preparing for change. Some monumental events have helped shape Cupertino and changed the face of the city. From a sleepy farm town to the heart of Silicon Valley and world-renowned for its educational system, Cupertino has evolved quickly and progressively in its 45 years. Participants in the Community Congress shared stories and created a timeline to reflect the major events that shaped the city. Of course, 1955, we had nothing but farmers in Cupertino. And then it say, came so close that the farmers said, we got to do something. So that's how they tried to incorporate. Well, that's when we went from a one-horse town to a two-horse town. <laughs> At that particular time, there was uh, only two-lane roads from Sunnyvale to Cupertino and from San Jose to Cupertino. And then uh, we had a, a crossroads store that had a wooden sidewalk. That was the only sidewalk in town at that particular time. And then Cali Brothers was the mainstay. You could see it from all over the valley when you were looking out uh, from the mountains. You could see it stand out among all the beautiful uh, pear trees, apricot trees, and prune trees. It says a major milestone of Cupertino's development was the creation by some of the city's largest landowners of Valco Business and Industrial Park in the early 60s. Of the 25 property owners, 17 decided to pool their land to form Valco Park, and then you know the companies actually came from that. So it really wasn't the companies coming here that was the evidence. It was the formation of turning farmland into an industrial park that then brought the companies. And, and I never thought before that that made Cupertino what it is and not just a bedroom community. So it was really those landowners at the time that formed that, and then that it attracted the companies out. It was that same five family group of people who, when they put together Valco, negotiated with the government in Sacramento to put 280 down the corridor, which really changed the traffic flow in the state of California. The worst traffic I ever encountered in this valley was not in the recent past, it was back in 1959 and 60, trying to get from here down to Lockheed on those two lane roads. It was really something, it was really crawling along. So uh, that was the first phase, and it's kind of as, it, as the defense industry sort of went into decline and, and fell off, it was really a wonderful coincidence that the rise of silicon filled right in at that same time. And, uh, 
And I remember reading about two young men named Steve that had just invented a personal computer. And there was something about that that just appealed to me. And I showed it to my husband, and it was prophetic, although I don't get any credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is really going to be something big. Steve Wozniak, you know, had a reputation when he was at uh, Homestead. What he did was when the instructor was not watching, he would rewire, you know, these, uh, at that time, the high-tech overhead projector. <laughs> so that when the teacher, you know, is ready to use it, the teacher would turn on the switch and then the bulb would just kind of, you know, blew up. <laughs> and so the teacher couldn't do anything for that particular day. And so, you know, I guess he was pretty creative back then. <laughs> There has just always been a very high level of parent involvement in the schools and people were at city council or uh, at uh, school board meetings, they'd last until 1 and 2 in the morning, large crowds there and uh, I think that that is what has caused the schools to be really good. Um, the parents have demanded good education. In the mid 80s, Fox and Carl Scadden had put a billboard in the Hong Kong airport I said, Cupertino schools are the best. <laughs> it worked. And it worked. And it worked. So we're not surprised to see a lot of Hong Kong people here. We're not surprised to see a lot of everybody here. And we finally come to Stevens Creek and uh, Stelling Road. All the lights, uh, traffic lights have gone out. And I see all those cars. And there was total, it was like pin drop silence. And, and everyone would wait for everybody else. You didn't need any police officers. You did not need any law enforcement people. And I said, you know, it's like a silver lining kind of thing. It touched me so deep. And it'll stay with me. And I think that is what makes a great community. Whenever there is a, some sort of catastrophe, it brings us together. That's what I mean. Participants of the Community Congress were led in a series of activities that helped them identify future challenges the city of Cupertino will face. A myriad of ideas and issues emerged from these exercises and included everything from affordable housing to public transportation. I'm thinking of public transportation and I think I thinking that we need I recommending that we think about regional solutions and working towards getting Cupertino to be a um, part of a transportation hub. I think that we have a partial hub in, by Valco, and I think we can develop that idea to it would be an improvement in the infrastructure. But I really think we need to work on regional solutions to certain major issues like transportation and working towards public transportation. We don't have a boundary here. Uh, we are invisible because most people work here, maybe not live in Cupertino, but they live in Mountain View, Los Altos, but they work in Cupertino for eight hours a day. We should take care that our walking space, our biking space, they are not taken, taken over by over-commercialization. I have to put in a plug for the other creatures that live here in our hills and put a big plug in for the preservation of wildlife habitat. We've, we've talked in the past a number of times about neighborhoods and quality of life. Quality of life will indeed deteriorate badly if we don't pay attention to the preservation of wildlife habitat. I mean, wildlife is important, but it's also good to have parks for uh, with, that allow dogs to go into and other animals. It is a melting pot and it was a boiling pot, I would say, when, when I first entered 5C. And it cooled down substantially in two years. That is what I am seeing after being a member for more than two years. So I would say that things can be done, but it is under our hands or hands of citizens to take decisions in the right direction to make it happen. Recently, my daughter bought a house in Pleasanton because she can't afford to buy one in Cupertino. 
And that said, and I think housing is another issue that we're going to have to face in Cupertino. You can't pay your teachers what you're paying your cleaning service. So um, keep that in mind. In order to get really good people, and you don't want dummies to teach your children, you want some of your brightest people to be in there. You've got to pay them, and you've got to give them the respect and the support, and then you'll keep having good schools. Adults are much more cooperative between the races, where, again, going back to the high school student, in the high schools, there is a lot of racial segregation, and there are a lot of racist problems coming up in the high schools, and it's something that isn't coming up as a community because most people involved are adults. And it's one of those things that needs to be looked at. It needs, there's something needs to be done about it. Because it's definitely it's becoming a problem in the high school. One of the big things that isn't in Cupertino is a downtown where people can go where, as a younger person, like there is nowhere that I can go to see other teenagers. You don't have something to do. You don't call somebody. You don't drive half an hour to go somewhere. You walk five minutes to the downtown, and there's always someone there to do something. And that's what we don't have here. Residents stepped into the shoes of policymakers and, working alongside of business people and city leaders, devised steps to address these issues. And here are the results of their teamwork. The challenges that kept coming up were providing affordable housing to teachers, to um, people who are longtime residents of Cupertino, and uh, to people with special needs. The bottom one that says create attractive alternative housing for seniors, what we're looking at there is uh, the comment that was made either this morning or yesterday that we can't afford to move out of our large homes in Cupertino. We want to stay in Cupertino. We're baby boomers, we're post-child families. We don't need our big houses anymore. But what do we want to live in? We don't want to live in a small apartment. We want to be part of uh, say a year 2000 type housing. Um, so we want to have a workshop where the, we hear from those people about what kind of places they would like to live in and build those places. And we'd also like to have this workshop um, because a lot of people do have spare rooms, but they have a lot of concerns and a lot of fears and they're not willing to rent out a room. And so the city could be kind of proactive and have a workshop so and hear all their concerns. One other thing kept coming up a lot too is we need to get businesses involved in solutions in this area and um, a possible solution for businesses to encourage businesses to give stock options to teachers perhaps. Just talking about public transportation in a different light regarding buses to help get um, buses more accessible throughout the community, bus stops accessible, and hoping that Measure A would pass um, and then possibly you know, something in the future with a light rail here. But again, um, as Ann mentioned and other mentions, all these things about the public transportation, the real bottom line issue is that if it's not accessible, if you have a bus, you have a light rail, or you have a park and drive, and it's not accessible where people feel comfortable using it, that it can get them somewhere on time, they won't use it. So that has to be a big consideration in planning public transportation. Um, one of the things about traffic seemed to be a big concern throughout the city and also in pocket areas. and then. Along with that is the concern for people's safety. Pedestrians, you know, could be killed as is in becoming more common in San Francisco. And so the concern for stretching, lengthening the time of the pedestrian time to cross the street. And then we, I think, got down to the bottom line of if the traffic was enforced more highly, somebody running through a red light, um, and Cupertino got the reputation that you can't do this in our town, and the word got out, we better not speed in Cupertino, we better not run lights, because they, they figure that really the people doing it are from out of town that use this as a cross through to get somewhere. So to get that reputation out they thought would be a good message and that would handle a lot of it in an inexpensive way. Before deciding the location really to look at what what's working now like uh, the Oaks and Valco Fashion Park and see why or why not things are working look at the current trends and and bring in maybe some developers to say okay take the community's goals for the for the um, downtown area and decide what will fit their goals and then bring that to the council, have them evaluate the costs and certain plans and then maybe bring it to a community forum like this today so they can decide what, what, which way they want to go. This change is coming to us and how do we 
um, come up with a plan to manage the growth. And we feel it's important to have a vision of what we want our cities to be um, with growth environment um, in mind. Um, the first thing we can do is inventory what we have. The general plans was uh, done like 10, 13 years ago. Maybe it's time to look at it and working with our business partners in a community. They are part of our community, so we should invite their input as well. And um, the city council, the leaders of the community will then use that input to update the general plan to reflect what the community needs. We wanted to address the issue of um, parent involvement and support of the teachers. And not saying that the parents are disruptive, but we're basically trying to say um, we need to better understand how parents and other people can help the teachers in their involvement, the best way to do so. So that was a little bit different there. Um, and also with respect to, see, funding was a very big issue because what it came to is there's a lot of things that we think could be done but in order to have that done, we really need the funding as well as the support. So that, that was kind of a theme throughout the whole thing. And um, again, parent involvement and support for children's respect for teachers. We thought uh, just from a kind of a conceptual and uh, society type thing where we really need to value the teaching profession much more than we do now. And one individual thought, not just by the community, but also within the teaching community itself, um, some thought maybe they need to really get a boost in their, um, the way they see the teaching profession. Oh, the one thing that struck us was that both teens and seniors have very similar needs. Everything we addressed about one, we were able to find parallels um, in needs relating to the other. Um, both, both groups need transportation, both groups need a place to be with their colleagues and peers. It was very interesting. Um, the one thing that I'd like to elaborate on was the item that said, do something now. <laughs> what we, that wasn't quite as imperative as it sounded. What we really meant was that the senior, the se senior center is being built, we know that. The teen center is definitely on the agenda. Um, it's not going to happen in the next two, three, four, five years maybe. Between now and when the teen center becomes a reality, we were trying to address issues that could be facilitated more immediately. Um, to meet the needs of the teens while they're still teenagers, uh, before they grow up and go away. One thing we also discussed was um, there have been events planned for teenagers in the past, um, but they've usually been adult organized and adult led. So we came up with the idea that maybe a group of teenagers should get together, um, maybe have a forum, uh, something that could maybe rotate to each high school um, every month to plan the different activities um, so they could be teen-led, and they'd appeal to the teenagers. After uh, discussing a list of uh, community values, which included, uh, as you saw on the board, um, excellence in education, uh, promoting a sense of uh, uh, commitment, uh, promoting a sense of uh, belonging, the joy of uh, belonging to your community, etc. Uh, the group focused essentially and repeatedly on the necessity to reach out to the new citizens of uh, the Cupertino community, that it is the primary responsibility of the uh, city institutions and the organizations, particularly the city council, to reach out to, to new members of the community, uh, at least to make these new members aware of the opportunities and uh, the facilities available for them to take an active and meaningful role in community life. One thing that needs uh, a lot of improvement is opening up the channel of communication between, not only between uh, different ethnic communities, but also between institutions and organizations and uh, uh, the citizens of the city. Thank you. At the beginning of the discussion, we were talking about the difficulty of getting people to volunteer and join groups, <clears throat> and also the difficulty of um, having people from different ethnic backgrounds and different cultures understand what volunteerism is. Towards the end of the discussion, our problem seemed to be that there were groups who needed volunteers and there were groups who needed, they had people who needed to volunteer and the two groups were not getting together. So we, we felt that there needed to be some sort of a clearinghouse or a way of uh, getting these people together plus also uh, encouraging more volunteerism from, from newcomers. It's marketing the, the facilities and groups that are here, 
that need the volunteers and also those people who have volunteers, such as students who need to do volunteering before they can graduate, those groups need to find a way of getting uh, inf their information out that they have the volunteers to the groups who need the volunteers. After two days of thoughtful, often intense discussion about topics relevant to everyone in the community, those attending the Congress were ready to wrap up their work. The fruits of their labors will now be examined, reviewed, and used by the City Council in forming their goals for the next year. And those who attended the Congress will have the satisfaction of knowing that their participation in the future of their community will have an impact on the city for years to come.